Thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you everyone for being here today. We are going to basically try to understand what do we mean when we talk about displacement economies. Um, when we talk about displacement economies, uh, we are referring to those economies that are understood as a collective economy created by refugees and IDPs through their livelihood activities, enterprises, need for services and for consumption, and also through their mutual support and diaspora inputs. Uh, briefly, through the objectives of Work Package 2 that leads with uh, displacement economies, we want to specifically uh, understand what do uh, displaced people and refugees mean when they talk about self-reliance, which are the components, the main components of livelihoods, and which are the perspectives on their economies. Secondly, we want to uh, analyze the difference between urban and camp settings in terms of livelihood and entrepreneurial capacity. Third, we would like to assess the economic and social contributions of displaced economies and displaced people to the, the host societies and surrounding camp areas. Then we also want to address the gap in knowledge that we understand that exists between uh, about the barriers and enablers of self-reliance and productive livelihoods. And finally, we need to explore the role that municipal authorities and local actors like uh, local enterprises, for instance, uh, should play in fostering self-reliance and the productive livelihoods of displaced people. When we were through the literature, we were able to make some findings and also to reflect on some of the gaps, some of the information that is, is still missing. Um, about displacement economies, we could understand that it's mostly shaped by regulations, both formal and informal, uh, both legislations, for instance, and social norms that uh, dictates or to some extent are able to limit the options that are available to displaced people. Also, there, there is an important contribution of demographics in terms of uh, gender, age, but also ethnicity, that, which determine the type of uh, options that are available to this place, uh, to internally displaced and refugee people. Also, location has something to say about the extent of, of displacement economies and how these evolve. It's not the same being in a camp or being in a city and the options that are available in every setting. Apart from that, A, uh, and the type of assistance and programming that supports displaced people has a direct impact on the decisions they made about around livelihoods and their outcomes, but not so much the opposite. We must say that sometimes aid programmings are not so tailored to actually the, the actual capacities of displaced uh, people. Following with the network, social capital has a central role to play in the definition of livelihood strategies and connections seems to be essential to access information, employment and business opportunities, but also financial support and training options for people in displacement. And also finally, I'm, I'm losing, I'm, I'm forgetting about this important point. We, we want to make our point about time, not only time spent in displacement, when we talk about protractedness, but also the time that people have been living either in camps or in cities, and also the way they experience time and how they see themselves uh, staying for a long period, whether in camps or in cities, or they see themselves in those places just for a while, and maybe that's going to have an effect on the way they understand their livelihoods and their economic contributions to the, to the societies that host them. Um, we had tried to make a review about the sustainable livelihood framework, considering that it's been extensively used in widely used also to understand forced displacement, but also to, but mostly to understand uh, development. Um, when, we, when we review the sustainable livelihood framework, we, we understand this is a relevant um, tool and that still can be used and should be used. But we consider that some of the analysis, uh, mostly the ones that have been, that have taken place in urban settings, uh, urban settings are mostly gender blind and often undervalue and unpaid and reproductive work. Um, they also offer a limited information about livelihood pathways. It means how uh, work trajectories and displacement journeys have an effect on the livelihoods of displaced people and, and in their capacity to start their own business about displacement economies, as I previously said, we understand this as a collective rather than individual endeavors. Um, 
And finally, when we think about the gaps in the literature, we've seen that there's a need to research further on the interaction, on the interaction between the space and host economies. We need to go beyond interaction in, in the labor market, and we have to make emphasis on the connections they have with the countries of origin, but also the connections that they are able to build or the interaction with municipal authorities. There are also, there's also a, a gap in research on the economic pathways, I was, as I was explaining before. Um, what we refer to when we talk about economic pathways is the combination of time and experience and how this affects people's options and the choices they made about their economic opportunities. There is also a gap on transboundary economies and how people actually use their connections with the countries of origin and also with other important economic hubs that they have access to. There's not much written on this sense about what displaced people actually do in terms of transboundary trade. And finally, there's not so much, there's a lot written about the burden, not so much written about the positive contribution that displaced people actually do or, or, or have to offer in terms, in economic terms, but also in social and cultural terms. So this is the diagram that we were able to elaborate uh, from Cardiff after doing the literature review and putting in common what we've learned from the, uh, from the uh, livelihoods approach and, their sort of, and its shortcomings. Sort of you can see in this diagram two different levels of analysis. The first row refers to individual and household uh, uh, livelihoods. And it, reflects it. it reflects about livelihoods. You can see there's this gray, first gray box that talks about the context when we take into consideration the socks and hazards, but also the policies and, and institutions that affect the life of uh, displaced people. And finally, uh, the, the type of economy and the type of society and the constraints they, this may put into the different uh, other uh, components of livelihoods and enterprises. So in this first uh, row, we can see the Pentagon that uh, I'm sure that you are all familiar with uh, of the sustainable livelihoods uh, framework, uh, with all the different capitals that uh, all the different assets that, are, that belong to to refugees and IDPs. Um, these different assets, we are not so interested in learning how much of them they have, but how actually these assets are being used and combined in order to build economic opportunities and livelihood activities. So the next uh, box, you have the livelihood activities that are also shaped by the aspirations but by, and, and by the previous experience of displaced people. And finally, we have the outcomes that we don't want to understand outcomes as something uh, particular or uh, of the household or of the individual as in terms of income or in terms of personal well-being, but also as a contribution they do to their host economies. On the second row, you can see what is maybe more innovative of our proposal, uh, of our diagram. It's what we think about enterprises and how are these are actually shaped and built by displaced people. So in the Pentagon, we have considered market access, access to space and trade networks and legal status how this is transformed into different uh, enterprise activities in terms of scale and sector, but also in the characteristic, if people actually build in partnership with host communities, their own business, or if they are doing on their own, and the aspirations are how these shaped enterprises. And finally, um, the productive economies, what is, what is the final result of, of this process in terms of meeting the objectives in terms of revenue for enterprises, but also contributing to local economy, uh, creating new employment opportunities and, and, and increasing consumption. So about the outcomes and the impact, we are expecting from our research that we uh, are able to offer a grounded and local understanding of displaced people livelihoods and entrepreneurial capacity and how this can actually contribute and, and, and to enhance and support municipalities and, and can be supported by municipalities and international actors. But what we need to know from you, and, and that's something Lucy was saying before, is how, where are the opportunities for international impact and what are the pointers for achieving local impact? Thank you very much for listening and waiting for your inputs.